So joining me today is the MD and CEO of Mercedes-Benz India, Mr. Martin Schwenk. Uh, Martin, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon. Um, so jumping straight into it, it's been really good to see the automotive industry take the fight to uh, the coronavirus pandemic that we're having head on. And Mercedes has uh, has also set up a 1500 bed unit uh, at a hospital uh, outside of Pune. Uh, how is that initiative going? I think uh, we, we did start early when, when we saw the entire uh, drama building up. We did reach out to the local authorities, to the local hospitals, and we thought, what can we do from our end? Um, and the proposal was then to support and setting up that hospital. Um, and I think uh, that works quite well. It, it is in operation. Uh, but I don't have a daily report on that, so I, I would have to give it a pass to know exactly uh, what the situation is today. But uh, generally speaking, setup is, is strong and it, it seems to be working. So uh, that, that's good to hear. Uh, and your team has come up with an exciting catchphrase recently as well. It's called Merck from Home. So uh, 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 let's start with your work from home story. How is work from home going for you? Well, work from home is, is definitely different. Uh, it has a lot of benefits to me. Yeah? I mean, I don't have to travel to our factory in Chakan every day. That takes me yeah. uh, both directions like two and a half hours. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and so it is a very uh, neat approach in that uh, aspect. On the other hand, it's kind of a strange feeling to be weeks uh, uh, without any real end uh, at home and then basically working, uh, sleeping, eating all in, in one cycle. Yeah, uh, so it's, it's very different as well and, and a little uh, un, I'm not used to it. But on the other hand, over the weeks, I would think uh, I personally adjusted quite well. I, I set up all the equipment I need here. Uh, um, I mean, it's like a command center type of thing. I have like four screens and I, I, I sit here um, and, and can do basically everything. Um, and I got used to uh, the meetings we have, uh, the different uh, technologies to be used. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, benefit in that, but uh, on the other side, the interaction with people is missing, the interaction uh, with the colleagues, with the dealers, with customers. That's obviously a lot of what is the charm of, of the job, yeah, uh, that, that's not there at the moment, yeah, so, um, yeah, so it's a mixed bag, I, I should say, yeah. 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 And, and speaking of the factory in Chakan, uh, do you have a timeline in mind as to when it might start to become operational once again? I mean, we fully depend on what the authorities say. I mean, uh, right now we, we have uh, over the weeks we have had uh, like daily management calls every day. We have a, uh, a situation a discussion and we follow exactly uh, in that sense. There's no ways we can change that what the authorities are saying. So at present, um, the plans are still on that something might happen early May. On the other hand, uh, Pune uh, um, Mumbai are the hotspots in, in, in Maharashtra, so I would have limited hope that we really go into full swing. Some emergency activities will, I think, be possible, but then we'll have to rely on really how, how it develops. We're in constant contact with the authorities on all levels uh, to get uh, information to share what we would want to do and what we could do or what's needed. But at the end, uh, obviously, the bigger topic is how is the entire city developing and then the entire country. So yeah. we have to fall in line with what the requirements are. And it's, it's a little pointless to complain or not to complain. It's just uh, the framework we have to, to live with at the moment. Yeah, yeah. And talking about your position in the market, Mercedes-Benz has been the number one luxury car maker in, in India for some time now. How important is that number one position? Well, I think um, it is for the team it is definitely important to, to be on that position. Um, even though I would not want to uh, make it like the criteria number one. It is helpful in many aspects. Um, it, it is kind of our understanding that uh, I would almost say, even without selling the most cars, we would still feel we are the number one. Yeah, In terms of uh, the products we're having, in terms of uh, the service we are offering, so it is not all about the volume. It's the entire spirit of uh, being at uh, being at the forefront, moving the industry specifically in our segment. So that aspiration, I would say, would always be there. Whether we are selling the most or second or third, that's not it. And so the team itself 
uh, is definitely pushing in that in, in these directions and then it feels like kind of a reward if it can also come uh, across on, on, on sales numbers but again I would not say this is something which is the most important to aim at at the end it's about uh, offering the right products and uh, also having a good business yeah so just to sell cars um, and there we come usually at the topic of, of discounts or so in theory I can expand more and uh, sell more but then it goes uh, to the detriment of, of, of pricing, of uh, discounting, and then eventually you, you damage the brand. So, yep. so I think that's something we are very conscious about. So our number one aspiration comes more uh, from topics like the work, uh, the work from home approach and, and, and uh, initiatives where we uh, think and aspire to, to, to have, a, um, how can I say, an important say in the industry here in India. Uh, and uh, speaking of that number one spot, because not only are you number one currently, but you've also been the longest running luxury car maker in India. Uh, so in the past, because uh, a Mercedes has become so ubiquitous with the luxury car market in India, you uh, almost became a victim of your own success because everyone's father had one and a grandfather had one. And so maybe the younger generation wanted to explore other brands. But uh, the Mercedes story has come back. So what is the secret to, to your most recent success? Well, I mean, that is really what I heard when I came here one and a half years ago to India. And I, a lot of people told me this brand used to be like, like a, a, an uncle's brand and a, it, it's, it's what your parents w would do. Um, I mean, fast forward to the Auto Expo in February. I could not even sense it a little bit. If you see the, the, the level of product, the variance we had, uh, there's something for everyone. There's something uh, for uh, the connoisseur, there's something for the sporty guy, there's something for the family. And I think a lot of that uh, is also related to the design, uh, to the general innovation which is built into our cars. I mean, uh, traditionally, um, if I think, for example, about our Mercedes Me Connect about M MBUX uh, technologies like this. They aim at being at the forefront of, of yep. uh, automotive uh, technology. Um, and that is certainly something which is which is not the traditional picture you may have from that brand uh, in the past. So I think a lot of this push uh, happened with the variants of the cars, the, the beautiful design, um, and also the aspiration of, of bringing technology uh, uh, early and strong in, into the cars. So AMG, I mean, uh, surely a lot of uncle, uncles drive that, but it's certainly not the image you would think of. We're very successful with uh, our dream cars, AMGs and so forth. So the whole brand is so broad uh, in the meantime that going back to Auto Expo, I, I was actually overwhelmed about the reception there. It was my first time I could witness that. And you have every age bracket, yeah, you have like the uh, eight year old boy or girl who, who, who looks with big eyes at the cars. Uh, to the elder, the older couple who, who has another look and has some questions there. So I think it's really a, a broad uh, audience that that uh, follows us and 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 likes the brand uh, and the product. So I I love your AMG cars, of course. But I think for me the most interesting new launch of yours was the V Class, the Marco Polo Horizon. For for 1.38 crores, you're getting virtually like a house on wheels. What is the response been in the market to that? I mean, we have we have a lot had a lot of queries, um, but I have also to say uh, the whole uh, lockdown situation and what happened now from March onward it distorted everything. So quite yeah. frankly, uh, we're not in a normal scenario at the moment. Uh, but the interest was massive. I mean, it started obviously with the press, um, and I, I should actually say it started with me yeah? when when I saw the car for the first time uh, here in our, on our premises. Uh, and I, I took and I thought, oh my gosh, I should take this this thing out to the country now and explore it. Uh, and the similar feeling was across uh, everyone who had a look at it. Uh, the journalists, uh, a lot of uh, uh, customers or just uh, people who are interested in our cars had the same feeling. So so we get we got a lot of inquiries and we have also already made some uh, some some sales there. Uh, however, since it's a, a, a car which is imported, all timelines are a little bit uh, at, at a, how can I say, at, at an issue for, for the time yeah. being. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how it goes on. But you know, it's only one thing is selling a car and it, I think the bigger part for us is also to show what we are capable uh, of as a brand. Um, and then, I mean, which brand can, can do something from MPV that is a camper 
to like a super sports car, I mean, surely that is something which which not many brands can can even aim for. Yeah. So uh, and that is definitely uh, also the aim for us that that you show this is us. Um, and for everyone, there is something you can aspire to and you can have uh, entertainment, fun or whatever you dream of. Yeah, and you had a lot of other products that were planned for uh, launch pretty much around now. The 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 A class, uh, the the new GLA, the GLS, maybe the EQC. Uh, what happens to all of those product plans going forward this year? Um, we we are we are um, not changing our product plans. Yeah, so we will keep uh, the the plans as we have uh, planned them. However, we will see delays. I mean, uh, that is very natural. I mean, we, we have had not production, some of the components, but even some cars are CVU cars, so uh, we just cannot uh, continue as if nothing happened. Uh, but we will not uh, change the general direction. So we'll keep, there's no, no plan to, to cancel any vehicle or to uh, really change. Even the, the sequence is hardly changed, uh, obviously a little bit uh, adjusted. And it still depends on how the whole thing develops. Yeah. So, but uh, that is certainly uh, a consideration we have. When can we do it? But the if is, is clear. There is no if question. It's only the when question uh, that is that is hard to answer for some of the products, quite frankly. And we mentioned your work from home initiative, which actually was unveiled just yesterday, which is. Uh, the ability to be able to buy and, and take delivery of a car through the online uh, channels. It's a very recent uh, rollout, but what is the response to that be? Any sales as yet? Um, let me start like this. This is not something we have started like four weeks ago. Um, we have we have already late last year, we have launched our platform uh, for uh, and we started with used cars on that, yeah. our uh, pre-owned vehicles. And, yeah. uh, we made it really public uh, with the on the Auto Expo itself. We also had a, a used car, there, a C class uh, sitting, and uh, the idea was to create traffic onto the platform uh, on used car and also to learn how that works. And and from mid February to end of March, uh, we sold around 150 used cars via that platform. Um, it was always the plan to move then into a broader customer journey and expand that to new cars. Uh, so we would continuously working on the new car launch uh, in the system itself and in the journey itself. So so that happened then, and I can say we accelerated that. And obviously, I mean, we work from home, uh, yep. but we had obviously a lot of energy and time then also to focus on that. So we put together uh, the teams uh, to focus on that. Um, and it's also, I think, a great thing for a team to have a clear target and a yep. clear target the day when the lockdown ends, we should be able to be operational. Um, and, uh, and, and they beat it by some days. Some of the functions are still open. Uh, for example, there is a function uh, of online concierge or, or product uh, expert out of Pune. Uh, these type of functions, obviously, ca we cannot even set up or test as long as we cannot reach our premises. Yeah. But uh, overall, uh, the entire plan was then uh, crunched uh, to, to be within the timeline. And uh, we have seen a lot of traffic now uh, coming. So we have since uh, Friday, where the first press notes come out, we have basically seen on the on the on on the website uh, a double amount of traffic than we had before. We see also that uh, the, uh, the, the the time people are staying on on the website is getting uh, longer. But on the other hand, uh, we have not had massive sales or anything. Now it's still building up. Uh, and there's also, quite frankly, it is like anything you start. There's a few glitches here and there uh, that we will work out these kinks by by uh, early May, the next uh, 10 days. I'm sure it's even a better experience. So, the, you know, it's not something we do now for the situation. It is we, we use this situation as an acceleration um, of uh, of the plans we anyways had, because we firmly believe uh, Indians are very tech savvy and, and we really believe uh, that in a few years you can have like 25% of sales. That's what we uh, thought around uh, 2025 in this ballpark. And I'm more convinced than ever that this is doable uh, because when you really venture into that and you see what are the elements a customer needs from uh, the early exploration stage, when they look, what, what would it be to the delivery? It's a long journey. There's a lot of things uh, in between uh, up to say documents, payments and everything. And it, it, it's a it's a long journey and a lot of that 
uh, is today already electronically possible. Some of that is uh, still some gaps, uh, but I think the convenience of the customer and the transparency a customer gets out of these uh, will create also uh, a lot of traction. And, and I'm convinced that uh, we, you know, you have to look at it uh, through the eyes from a customer and not yeah. from a, a, a seller or a, a retailer. The first place is what does a customer want? And, and we really believe the customers want a, a relatively churn free journey and not everyone would want that. Uh, some of them might want completely electronically. Some of them might want what we call like an assisted uh, assisted uh, process where mm -hmm. they, they then reach out and then they uh, contact, they still sit in front of the, uh, their uh, uh, devices, but they guide it through. Yeah? They get then a, a test drive organized from the doorstep of their home. Uh, they go back uh, and they continue uh, the, the purchase then um, in an online scenario. So I think uh, this this is coming and we will see the statistics. If you ask me in say eight weeks, we would certainly have better numbers right now. It's a lot of based on what we saw happening on the used car and a firm belief that uh, the way how the Indian uh, customer is developing, the tech affinity we see here. Um, I mean, uh, it's so easy to order anything online so I think the threshold uh, will lower. So you will not only order food uh, or uh, um, any kinds of goods online. Um, if you have a proper process around that and, and you have a trust uh, in, in how it's set up, uh, then I think you will be able at the end and you will appreciate the fact, not everyone, but maybe 25%. Yeah. So who knows? Yeah. Yeah, I, I might do some AMG impulse buying, but I might have some trouble paying for it afterwards. <laughs> well, I mean, that's but that's the beauty of it. I mean, we will be able and we have it already. There's financing options in. And also, if you just want to play around. Yeah, it, I mean, it is it is in all stages here. Yeah, playing around, seeing what's possible, getting an yeah. offer, getting a test drive, going back to uh, start and uh, doing something else. Um, you know, and, and I believe with our, with our brand, we, we are a trusted brand here in India. We, we will uh, deliver a, a, an experience which, which can uh, compete with what happens in the showroom. Yeah. Um, and it's not that MB India is doing that. This is something what our dealers are doing at the end. We're not competing against our dealers, but uh, the, the customer has the choice. Yeah, What does he or she wants? And I'm very confident uh, over time, things will build up and that is an opportunity uh, for the business to, to grow as well. Was it a challenge to get the dealers on board? Because traditionally, this has been a very brick and mortar, touch and feel kind of a business. I think uh, what is always important is a good relationship to the dealer network. Um, and I would think we have traditionally uh, very strong dealers. We have a very strong uh, dealer network and we have a very strong uh, relationship. I tend to always to say it's like three families we're part of. We are part of a family in Pune. We are part of family with the dealers. And there's a family even with journalists. I mean, you know, within the action of our team, is so much is, is family built. And then the biggest family of that is the customer. Sound maybe a little bit strange, but um, when we talk about the dealers, there's a lot of uh, relationship and then trust in between the interactions. And then um, they also are not oblivious to the trends in the industry. Yeah, I mean, a lot of dealers uh, also are dealing for, uh, for other brands and, and are involved there. So the expectation is rather there that Mercedes is not standing behind, that we rather are at the forefront of uh, developments. Obviously, uh, when it comes to uh, push to shove, you have questions, yeah? Uh, do we do it like this? Uh, what does it mean? Do I uh, upload all inventory? What about this car and that car? So these questions are there. But if you go right now into the system, you will see hundreds of cars being available there um, yeah. and, and select uh, off the inventory we actually have. And I think that is something which I personally think is very important. If you go onto a website uh, and, and you look and you want to choose and, you know, it can take as little as maybe two days and you have the car at home. If you yeah. it's possible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it only depends on the registration and the financing process. So anything between two days to a week is doable. Um, and, and so so you would want to know, is there a car? Can I select it? You can interact via the website or directly with the dealer. Yeah. And then, and, and, you know, if you know what you want, you know, everyone is test driving his iPhone. Yeah. Some of them just buy a new iPhone. And I can quite clearly say not everyone is test driving our cars because they know when they buy an E-Class that they, they get an E-Class and yep. they know 
what the features are. So, so that all is all of that is there, and then uh, I think we, we have successfully uh, had a, a very good discussion with our dealers, and uh, now we doing the steps. What helped as well is uh, going first in with with used cars. Yeah, then you know it's something you have to grow. Yeah. And before used, we already sold collection and accessory items, um, and. So what you build over the years is then also an understanding how to do it, what's the benefit, what can we achieve. Um, and a lot of dealers saw quite some traction out of out of the used car business, which they might not have everyone expected, I guess. Yeah. And then when you move on and say, okay, now we're rolling out this. Um, and, uh, and I said that already, uh, not the intent to um, complement what the dealers are doing, but they are in charge of what's happening basically in their store. Yeah, uh, um, and that, I think that that is very important. So that we're not sitting here as a uh, headquarter in Pune, and and we say, okay, you sell it via this channel, I sell via that channel. Then you run into, I think, uh, an issue which we we don't have. Have you had to realign your numbers uh, for what happens to the market post this pandemic? And as the lockdown continues, are you sort of having to reevaluate that as you go along? Meaning that. Uh, if if the lockdown is longer than expected, uh, will the outlook be more pessimistic? Yeah, I mean, that is one of, of the tasks we're doing at the moment, trying to assess uh, what what is the condition. Yeah, so um, and what, what do we expect to happen? And then obviously one of the resources you have is references out of other markets. I mean, obviously China, but China has very different dynamics. Um, then there is uh, South Korea, maybe. There is a look into what happens in the rest of the world, and then you have all the consultancies, and you have uh, all that information. You have uh, the uh, the Indian automotive bodies, Siam, uh, which is doing forecasts. So if you look into that, uh, it, it really depends on how the entire uh, economy will develop. Yeah. So and you see the numbers uh, as I read them uh, daily. It's the question is, will there be growth, or uh, how much, or how little? So if, if you really take this into account, um, that there will be limited growth, if at all, we'll certainly see a substantial dip um, in the passenger car market. And, and numbers 15, 20, 25 percent is anyone's guess. And that really depends on the extension of the lockdown. I think the numbers uh, in 20, 25 percent uh, uh, um, reduction compared to previous fiscal year is is, is uh, at least if I uh, look into what we see in research out something where is, that is uh, possible. Maybe not the ideal scenario we wish for, but then at the end, uh, I think we cannot rule out that the development will uh, be around these lines. Um, and again, that's only partially our own research. I mean, we, we also rely on publicly or on studies we can we can access. So having said that, that will that will have an impact on, on, on every uh, manufacturer and that will have an impact on us as well. And accordingly, we uh, will have to look into our volume planning then. Do you see any light at the end of the tunnel? I mean, the simulations would, would show there is a light and uh, sorry, simulations would also indicate that it really depends on how long uh, how long the shutdown now uh, is going to continue. Um, if we were to open early May, um, and there I have my doubts at least for, for the tier one cities, there is quite some concerns, then I, I would think a couple of months for sure it will take. I personally, if you ask me for my personal wish, I still hope that by quarter four of this calendar year, uh, when the festive season comes, we come to something which is uh, a normal situation, whatever that might mean. Uh, yep. by the, um, obviously, I cannot predict that this will be the case, but uh, I mean, on the one hand, simulations, and on the other hand, uh, maybe just the inherent hope uh, of uh, that we come back to some kind of normalcy uh, um, makes me think we should uh, we should hope for for a fourth quarter this year. And again, I'm on the calendar year here, which which brings us into some normal territory. But uh, again, that's anyone's best guess. Uh, it really will also depend on not only about the extension of the lockdown, also what are the ripple effects, how many businesses are, will, will failing uh, out of that, how is the liquidity in the market uh, being available, is the government taking any measures or not. Yeah, uh, so far I think not too many active interventions uh, yet, 
yeah so that that are all questions which which nobody can really factor in so maybe what i was hoping for is more best case scenario i really don't know yeah, yeah. i mean do a lot of analysis but uh, you can uh, ask the highest paid uh, uh, analysts analysts at the moment no one will really give you a clear view because it really all depends on the premises you put in the the, the outcome you, you get out of it do, do you expect any active interventions from the government well I expect is a good question. Yeah, I mean, so far it was not such a strong uh, focus on 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 the economy. I think it's 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 necessary to focus first on uh, the common good, which is to make sure that uh, people stay safe and healthy. And I can understand that this is a tremendous task uh, in this huge country, which has so many different uh, states and regulations and 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 uh, population. So I can really understand that's a huge uh, task and it, uh, a lot of effort is needed to really think of how do we manage something like this. And then the near term question is, how do we make sure that uh, everything is stable, people are uh, not only healthy, but also uh, being uh, fed and, and everything is, is, is under control. I can fully uh, appreciate that. Uh, nevertheless, I would think uh, the focus has to move on then after the immediate threat is, is kind of uh, contained or to some extent contained and the question will then uh, get bigger. How do we make sure that we can keep some growth into the, in the country? What can we do there? And then I would hope that uh, there is also look into the industry uh, itself. Yeah, uh, that, and, and that can be measures on times of, uh, in terms of making liquidity available or it can be measures which we always were hoping for that stimulate our business and there we had the classic of, of GST, for example, uh, to, to really give us uh, some um, okay, support to push up the industry again um, and benefit then in the whole ma <coughs> made in India world again. And industry is very important. All the industry is, is, is one of the core pillars um, of the industry here. So I would think together with all our other Indian manufacturers that uh, we get some, uh, some support here to to, to really, uh, even if it's temporary, to, to go uh, to really to kickstart, I should say, yeah? uh, the economy, because that will have a lot of impact. Yeah, it, it has a lot of impact, uh, not only for the order itself, there's a lot of ripple which goes into the entire supplier industry. It, yeah. goes, into yeah. over France. it goes into the hotel industry. I mean, if I'm not traveling, uh, a lot of us are not traveling. So there is no there is nobody uh, in the hotels. Yeah, there is nobody serving the hotels. There is nobody uh, delivering to the hotels. I mean, there is a lot of ripple uh, which industry uh, is, is supporting. So I would think uh, that it is very important also to to push uh, industry itself. And I would hope uh, some support there. I mean, there's many countries where similar discussions happen also on there. And, and obviously, if you think of my home country in Germany, that's one of the requests also from the auto industry there with the understanding uh, that uh, that can then support, uh, if you support the demand side, you will get a lot of uh, um, benefits in, in yeah. the entire economy. So, so do I expect, I would think um, some steps uh, need to be taken um, after the immediate containment of, of the problems. I think some bandwidth will also be then available to look into uh, the future uh, and, and how how to support and, and, and kickstart the economy. Uh, so that is certainly a big concern for everyone. Yeah. Thank you, Martin. I appreciate your time. And uh, I look forward to seeing you back in Chakan when uh, when all of this goes over sooner rather than later, hopefully. Um, and, and thank you once again. I look forward to seeing you soon. I'm going to get onto my browser now and do some Merp from home shopping, maybe. Please have a look. And uh, there's many different cars here. Yeah, and, uh, I'm, I'm, give me your feedback uh, if, if you want yeah, uh, on what you find or what you don't find. So I can tell you that I'm w one of the most critic one who goes through that thing basic day daily and then yeah. and I give feedback and say, please guys, this, this, this. Yeah. So any additional opinion is really highly valued. So thanks for having me, Troops. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank uh, you. The quality of the video was, was in a way we could use it actually yeah, yeah I, I think it'll be all right i think your ipad saved us so uh, thank god for uh, different types of technology for work from home okay thank you okay.